Son of God. My name is Brian Mason and this is part 11 of the Bible study called Blockage Removals. We're continuing in Nehemiah chapter 8. And in part 10 we looked at the reading of the law. How long had it been since the law was read to the people of God? Yet they had come into Jerusalem and they would heard the word read by Ezra. They would heard the word explained by him. And it had such a great effect upon them that in chapter 8 and verse 10 were read no, verse 9, the people, all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. That's where I left off last time. So, in verse 10, then he said unto them, that's Ezra, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them, for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord, neither be sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. That a tremendous word from Ezra. Yes, to go on your way, basically to eat, drink, rejoice, and distribute to others who didn't have any portions and the joy of the Lord is your strength. Is the joy of the Lord your strength? Can you say that? Yes, I get very tired, physically very tired. Long, long days, much, many people after me. But there we are. It's the joy of the Lord which gives that enabling, gives that strength to go on, not in my own strength, which basically is far, go far gone, but the strength of the Lord himself. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Hold your peace, for the day is holy, neither be ye grieved. Yes, it was seen as a very, very special and significant day that day when the people of God came back and were to be seen to be restored into a wonderful, wonderful relationship with God himself. That relationship based on the word of God. Now let here to encourage yourselves, although I'm speaking on the Old Testament, that God will never fail. God is incapable of failing. And to encourage you that what the Word of God says is there to be believed and received and acted upon to prove God that he is basically what he says he will do. Verse 12 And all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great mirth because they had understood the words that were decide, declared unto them. Yes, they were acting upon the Word of God. Are you acting upon the Word of God? Now, if you hear a singer uh, in the background, that's my friend Jess. Uh, seemingly, he's probably spotted a cat, and, and uh, he's not too suited to this other cat being on his territory. But he's a dear, dear cat. Uh, quite often spends a lot of the, the night with me. But anyhow, yeah, that's an aside, um, because many, when I'm actually uh, Skyping, uh, 
people have seen dear Jess and been quite fascinated by him. Uh, right, and so here we are, that first day, the significant day of the coming back, of hearing the word of the law read, the word of the law explained, and then going out, going returning to their own homes, and acting upon the word of God, and sharing portions as instructed by Ezra. And on the second day, now the people seemingly were not uh, invited to this particular one. They had received the word. But what was, was here? That the chief of the fathers of all the people, the priests and the Levites, unto Ezra, the scribe, and even to understand the words of the law. So those who were representative of God, the leaders at that time, they come together for further study of, of the word of God. And that is so important because unless leaders are in the word of God day by day, well, what have they got to, to feed, the, feed others on? What have they got to challenge other people, to encourage other people on the word of God? Basically, it would just be, be nothing, nothing to offer at all, because we can't offer them. Uh, humanism cannot meet the, the needs of the heart. Humanism is incapable of understanding the Word of God. It's the Word of God comes by revelation. And that it, revelation can only come when we've been born again of the Spirit of God. Simple as that. The intellect's not going to understand the Word of God. And they found written in the Word, in the law, which the Lord commanded by Moses, that the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast of the seventh month. Now, if you do look into the Word, and by all means I encourage you to look into the Word yourself, you'll find that the seventh month in the Old Testament has quite a number of feasts, quite a number of special, special days or special parts of the month. And here was one which had fallen by the wayside. And let's, let's uh, establish this by going to Leviticus, uh, the 23rd verse, uh, a chapter I mean, and the 34th verse, first. Uh, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month, shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. Then, in the 42nd verse, ye shall dwell in bulls, or tabernacles, seven days, all that are Israelites born shall dwell in bulls. Yes, for seven days. And it is quite, quite, quite wonderful. Let's have a look what he tells me here. Yes, here we are. Uh, tabernacles, booths, in brackets in gathering, a week of celebration for the harvest, living in booths and offering sacrifices. Back to Nehemiah chapter 8 and the 15th verse. And that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount, and fetch olive branches, and pine branches, and myrtle branches, and palm branches, and branches of thick trees to make bulls, as it is written. Yes, how many years had it been since this, this had taken place? Well, it wouldn't have taken place until the law, as it were, 
had started to be read and explained again. So the people went forth, the people heard, the people obeyed, and the people were joyful in actually doing that which God was asking them, saying to do, and brought them and made themselves bulls, every one upon the roof of his house and in their courts, and in the courts of the house of God, and in the street of the water gate, and in the street of the gate of Ephraim. And all the congregation of them that were come again, out of the captivity made bulls. Yes, there they were. They come out of that seventy years' captivity. And here's the restoration of, of that festival, that feast of the bulls. And they sat under the bulls, for since the days of Yeshua, the son of Nun, unto that day had not the children of Israel done so. And there was great gladness. Now that's rather a long time since the uh, uh, days of the son, Yeshua, the son of Nun. Let me just, just have a look where else, where else I should be record, pointing you to. Yes, we'll fi find ourselves, here we are. No, we've not quite arrived at that. Uh, yes, yes, and just, just find, find my way. And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity, made bulls. No exceptions uh, there. They were all delighted to be able to do that. Is your heart delight in the things of God? And sat under the bulls for since, yes, since they were absolutely thrilled because they were doing that which God had asked them to do. And they had known that God was asking to do them this. Oh, so day by day, from the first day unto the last day, he read in the book of the law of God, and they kept the feast seven days, and on the eighth day was a solemn assembly, according unto the manner. Yes, it is, it is amazing, isn't it? Yes, and then we move on to chapter 9. Now in the twentieth and fourth day of this month, the children of Israel were assembled with fasting and with sackcloths and earth upon them. Just look now, cross-reference to Ezra chapter 10 and the eleventh verse. Now therefore make confession unto the Lord God of your fathers, and to do his pleasure, and separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the strange wives. This is very much covered here. Hereby, let's turn it, yes, in verse 2 of chapter 9 of, of Nehemiah, and the seed, yes, of Israel separated themselves from all strangers and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. There had to be that separation. These who were outside of the covenant promises of God, they were not invited. They were not seen at that point in time as those who belonged to the people of God. Yes, when Jesus came, it was firstly to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. That Jew and Gentile as one would come together in the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son. But until then, there was this call to a separation, and separation included that which would have been of mixed marriages, 
that which would have been, marrying those who were not according to the, the covenant promises of God himself. So let us grasp hold that in these days too there is that call for separation unto God himself. By separation I mean separation for the, from the things which are of the world, the flesh and the devil. And there is that which has had the nerve to bring into, into that which is, should be church, has brought the world in, has invited the world in. The world with the standards of the world which are not the standards of God. The world bringing the world in with its uncleanness. That which is an abomination in the sight of a, of a holy God. That which is not according to the word of God. Oh, let us be real. Let us be honest before God. All is not well within that which calls itself Christianity and church. And there needs to be that repentance of sins. There needs to be that acknowledgement of the sins which have taken place and are still taking place under the name of Christianity and church. That which is offensive to many of, our, of the brothers and sisters in Christ in other parts of the world. Oh, let us, let us be so careful in these days. God is not pleased. He's far from pleased. That he's still the God of mercy. Yes, he's the God of mercy, but he's also the God of truth. He's the God of righteousness. And he demands that which is right living that which is accordant, in accordance with his word. And he will still have mercy upon those who, who bring their sins before him and repent of their sins. That sins which have been and are still being done in rebellion against his word and in the name of Christianity and church at that. Rebellion, even against God, right from the very beginning. Let's see what it says. Genesis chapter 1 and the first verse. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That is emphatic. That is there not to be questioned. Yet there are those who question this, those who deny it. But they will have to answer before God in time. If they have not come to repent of their sins, their sins of unbelief in the creation of the heaven and the earth, that is sin. It is sin because it is denying the God his own place. The God is the Almighty God. And as I will be reading more and more through this chapter, you will see that Ezra was giving in his teaching from the Word of God. He was bringing out the truths of the Lord God Almighty. And God was not there to be questioned. He's there to be believed. He's there to be acted upon what he's saying to be acted upon. And that is the great sin in the church these days. Not believing the word of God and not acting upon the word of God. Yes, as I said at the beginning, God can not, he can never fail. And he will never fail on his word. Because his word is sealed. And these mockers, within Christianity and church, who will not take God as his word. He'll blast you out of the way and bring in those who will believe his word. 
Back to Nehemiah 9 and the third verse. And they stood up in their place and read the book of the law of the Lord, their God. Notice, their God. No question here of who God is. It was accepted. They had come back, yes, their forefathers had gone into, into exile for 70 years because of their belief, disbelief in the word of God. And because their lives were sinful, they were doing that which was an abomination in the sight of a holy God, disobeying the word of God. Oh, the God will shake and shake and shake in these days everything that needs to be shaken. And only that which is of God and is in the rock Christ Jesus will stand in these days. Everything else that calls itself Christianity and church is on the broad road to hell, fire, to the torments of hell because of its disobedience because it denies the Holy One. And here they were studying. It says, for one fourth part of the day they were studying the law, and another fourth part they confessed. The word was had eaten into their hearts, not into their heads. And they what? As they confessed their sins and the sins of their that had gone on to take them, their forefathers, into apostasy. They wanted to be right with God and worship the Lord their God. Oh, to worship the Lord in beauty and with beauty and holiness and to bow down before him. His glory proclaim. Not the glory of man or woman, but the glory of God himself. And Jesus Christ, God the Son, being given his rightful place as preeminent in all things. Not the show, the outward show of religion with their garments. No, it's the garments of the heart, a clean heart, a pure heart, not the outward show. Then stood up upon the stairs of the Levites, and it lists quite a number of, of people. And what were they doing? They cried with a loud voice unto the Lord their God. Then the Levites and another, this long list, said, Stand up and bless the Lord your God forever and ever. Not just for, for the moment, but day by day. Living in that right relationship because he, the Lord Jesus Christ, and even the Father and the Holy Ghost, Jesus spoke about coming and making a, is their abode within the heart of the cleansed heart of the believer. Where is that being taught in these days? It's as if it's not in the scriptures. What a privilege to know that God the Father, Son and Holy Ghost comes to dwell within us and to live his life, the, the life of the Trinity in and through us. Not to our glory but to his glory. And blessed be thy glorious name. Where in Christianity and church today is that which says blessed be thy glorious name which is exalted above all blessing and praise. It's the praise of man and woman. It's the praise of that which is sin, rather than praising the glory of God, giving God his rightful place in your life. Will you give him his rightful place in your life? Or you, do you want to go along this broad road to hell fire itself? Because you've got yourself written on your own heart. You're only interested in the things of this life. 
instead of the things of eternity? Are you living in the light of eternity? Are you living in the light that the Lord Jesus Christ himself will soon return? Ones in the past lived in that light. He didn't return in their lifetimes, but all we can do is live in the light that he could return any moment. Because he will sweep away. He will fulfill that which needs fulfilling and sweep away and make the way clear. For the return of his beloved one will, will Jehovah. The return of Yeshua to come and gather those who are what have been born again of himself, born washed washed and cleansed through his precious blood and have the very life of God living within them and through them to the glory of God. O oh God, in these days, bring us to the realities of thy word, to the realities of the moment, to the realities of the rhema word for today. And that is that Everything and anything which calls itself of thyself needs to be separated wholly unto thyself. And living according to thy word and for thy glory and for thy glory alone. For this is asked through the name which has all the authority in heaven and earth and spoken through him the Lord Jesus Christ, thy beloved Son, that you are glorified through him. Amen.